Hello everyone, in this session I'm going to be looking at the current RAG exam structure and I'm going to compare it to the future RAG which is the core RAG and take a look at the TCP section which is part of the 2024 exam changes. Currently the RAG has five sections which are right here ethics, professional responsibilities and federal tax procedures, business law, federal taxation of property transaction, federal taxation of individuals, and federal taxation of entities. Well, the first thing you want to observe is the same sections will be part of the core. Notice section one, ethics, professional responsibilities, and federal tax procedures is the same, including the weight, 10 to 20%, 10 to 20%. Business law, it's going to be a slight expansion. It, it used to be 10 to 20, it's going to be 15 to 25. So a little bit more of coverage on business law. Federal taxation of property transaction currently 12 to 22 percent. What's going to happen? It's going to be trimmed down and we'll look at the details shortly. It's going to be between 5 to 15 percent. It could be as low as 5 percent property transaction. Now, federal taxation of individuals. Here we're discussing the individuals. It used to be 15 up to 25, up to one fourth of the exam. Now, it's going to start at 22 and it could be up to one third, 33% of the exam. So there's more coverage from the individual taxation perspective. Federal taxation of entities used to be 28 to 38, which is the, the largest chunk under the core. It's going to be reduced a little bit. It's going to be between 23 to 33. It could, it could represent up to one, one third or it could be up to 24. 23 to 20, 23 to 33, that's assume 25, it could be up to one fourth. Okay, so it's, but it's being trimmed down. So the federal taxation is being trimmed down. Now, obviously, we're going to have a new section called the TCP. Think of it as the advanced track. This is the specialization. And these are the topics, tax compliance and planning for individuals. So notice we, we cover the individuals here, then we cover the tax planning and compliance for individual, plus a new topic called personal financial planning. This we did not have. Entity tax compliance. Well, what are entity tax compliance? Corporation, CS, partnership, which we're, we're going to con be considered entities. What's going to happen? We're going to have some entities, tax compliance and tax planning for those. And some of the topics that we removed from the federal taxation of property transaction, which is going to be covered under section four under the TCP, which is the disposition of assets. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the details of each section separately. Starting with area one, as, as I mentioned in the introduction, area one is basically the same. The topics could be tested at a different level, but those are the topics, same topics, same weight, maybe a different testing level, it doesn't really matter, basically the same. For area two, which is the business law, well, again, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's going to be more coverage. And here are the topics. The only thing that's going to change is we're going to have a little bit more on the, about the federal law, about bankruptcies and anti-bribery, a little bit more expanded. Otherwise, the topics are basically the same. Now, let's take a look at the area three. Now we're going, we're getting into the federal taxation of property transaction. The old the old area used to be 12 to 22. The new one is 15, 5 to 15, less coverage. The old section A, and we're going to go through each section separately. The old section A used to be called acquisition and disposition of assets. And we used to learn about basis and holding, taxable and non-taxable disposition, amount and character of gains, netting, the netting process, acquisition of this and disposition of assets. Guess what? The new section A is only basis of assets. Simply put, the disposition is removed. The disposition part is moved to a new section in TCP. It's called the disposition of disposition of property plant 
a property, not property and plan, disposition of transaction, disposition of assets. Now we're only going to focus on, on the, under the basis of assets, just figure out the basis if we purchase an asset, convert an asset from personal to business use, if we got an asset through gift, inheritance, wash sale, intangible asset basis, and startup cost, what are the basis of these assets? The old area B, it used to be cost recovery, which is depreciation and amortization. The new one is the same thing. So no change here. You're gonna still going to learn about makers and any sorts of amortization under the current exam, the same as the old one. The old area used to be old area C. Old area C used to be gift taxation. What's happening to this area, old area C, some of the gift taxation, the basis of it is moved to A, and the majority of the gift taxation moved to the TCP, and it's going to be expanded. We're going to have more topics covered under gift taxation. This is old area C. Now, let's look at area 4. Now, we're done with area 3. We used to have ABC, and this is what happened to ABC. Now, old area four, which is individual, taxation of individual. As I mentioned, we're going to have more coverage. Starting with old area A. Under the old area A, you had gross income, inclusion, and exclusion. And these were the topics as per the blueprint. Calculate the amount that should be included or excluded from the individual tax return. Analyze projected income for the use and tax planning in future years. So notice, under the old blueprint, they used to mention the word planning. Okay, just so it's not going to be new to us but it's it's presented as a new topic analyze client provided documentation to determine the appropriate amount of gross income here's basically this is the simulation in other words they could ask you a simulation about this topic the new area it's also called the new a gross income included included and exclusion all what they do it's the same but they expanded on the topics so they are a little bit more specific they talk about we're going to test you about capital gains from sale of investment virtual currency gifted asset inherited asset tax exempt interest gift received life insurance decedents death income so on and so forth so they, they are a little bit more specific but i don't see that much of a difference except in the blueprint they kind of give you a little bit more of specific examples otherwise any income included and excluded will be was tested under the old exam will be tested under the new exam now they the part four and part five those are once you see review 1040 review and result discrepancies those are potential potential cpa exam simulations about this topic Again, we're staying in area four, but we're looking at uh, area B within area four. Reporting of item from pass through entities, which is making sure K1 will be there, separately stated and non separately stated. You will need to know them under the old blueprint and under the new blueprint. No changes about this. Part B. Part C. Old C used to be adjustment and deduction to arrive at adjusted gross income. Simply put the adjustments. You, do you know your adjustments and your deduction? Well, including QBI. Same thing. We have we have area C under the blueprint. Again, adjustments and deduction. The, not, not much difference, except what they do is they specify the adjustments. They kind of tell you a little bit more. For example, you need to know about the contribution to IRA, HSA, HSA, uh, and various deductions like they list the itemized deduction that you need to be familiar with, uh, such as uh, medical interest, so on and so forth. But here, they don't mention them, but they imply them. They imply them. They imply them. So not much of a change so far. Not, not much of a change so far. Uh, the Area 3 QBI will be there. Not much of a change. Then we have, again, reviewed Form 1040, which is basically what they're telling us is there's a potential simulation about adjustments and deductions. Simply put, make sure you know your Schedule A and your adjustments. They were tested under the old exam. They will be tested under the new exam. Again, slightly little bit more coverage, but the topics are there. The old old area of D under Section 4 was passive activity loss, and those, those were the topic. I basically recall it's basically just remember the definition of passive activities for federal income tax purposes calculate net passive activity gains and losses prepare a loss forward schedule for the passive activities and calculate utilization of suspended losses the new section it's called loss limitations uh well to a great degree similar but some of the topics will be will be moved to tcp calculate the net tax loss allowed under the sale of 
capital property, including the netting of capital gains, capital losses, and carry forward. The terminology a little bit different. Calculate the amount of ordinary business loss allowed for individual materially participating in the operation of a pass-through entities with sufficient basis in the entities. I would say to a, to a great degree, similar, similar. Calculate the losses allowed for tax purposes from a hobby, wash sale, sale of personal use asset. We used to learn about those in the old CPA and the exam and mention them now a little bit more explicitly. And there could be a simulation about this topic. Again, this is why I have review form 1040 and support and documentation. It means a potential, a potential, uh, potential CPA simulation could be asked about this topic. Old Area 5, which is the federal taxation of individual. Okay, we talked about this. Um, Section F. Section F filing status is the same. The old Section F was filing status. The new Section F is filing status. The old and the new G is the computation of tax and credit. Again, the same topic, but again, those topics will be tested at a different level, maybe a little bit more of an advanced level, but the topics are the same. Moving to area five, which is the federal taxation of entities, as I mentioned, it's trimmed down by, by, by at least 5%. The first area in this, old A under section five, the tax treatment of formation and liquidation of business entities, this whole section is m removed from here. So how to form and liquidate business entities, it's moved to TCP, moved to the advanced section. We have a new area new a which is called the differences between book and tax loss it's not really new it used to be the old b so the old b became the new a because remember a is gone so you're going to notice b is becoming a c is becoming b uh, d is becoming c so on and so forth so you're going to see this so the it's this is not really new this is not new a it's a new a the naming of it new but the topic are the same which is schedule m1 simply put we have a new b which called c corporation C corporation and but it's a trim down now we have a newbie because B is used to be the difference between the difference between book and the tax income now it's C corporation but remember C corporation here are tested at a, at, at a basic level the computation of taxable income tax liabilities and allowable credit and state and local tax issued but they're also trimmed down but what we removed from B used we used to have the following area under corporation under the old system NOL, capital losses, transaction between entities and owner, consolidated tax return, multi-jurisdictional tax issues, including state, local, and international. Those are not gone. All these topics for a corporation are moved to the TCP. So when we go to the TCP, you're going to see those topics. But they used to be, they used to be the C corporation under the regular reg exam. So notice the C corporation is trimmed down. Let's look at the old C. Old C is the C corporation. Again, we talked about this. Now, the new C is the S corporation. Remember, <laughs> the new C is, is S corporation. Simply put, because we removed A, so everything is going up. Okay? So that's what's happening. So C used to be D. S corporation used to be D section. I know this is a little bit confusing. S corporation used to be the D section. Now, since now it's the new C section. Once again, eligibility and election determination of ordinary business income or loss and separately stated item will be would remain tested under the core reg the basis of shareholder interest will be covered covered but also the same topic the basis of shareholder interest will be covered in tcp and this is what i hate the most about the changes about the tax ex about the reg exam is some topics like basis for example under s corporation will be covered under the core reg and it will be covered under the tcp the following Items were removed from the core, which is entity owner transaction, including contribution, loss and distribution, and built-in gains. So those are removed from the core reg. They're, they're moved to the TCP. Again, now we have, remember, S, S Corporation, I just told you, used to be the old D. Now we have a new D. The partnership moved to the new D. Just this is basically the, uh, the, cate the ca categorization of it. We still need to know determination of ordinary income and losses and separately stated items the basis of partners interest which is also covered in tcp same issue as with the s corporation but we remove the following topics from the core partner and partnership election move to tcp everything is moved to tcp here transaction between a partner and a partnership impact of partnership liabilities on the partner's interest in a partnership distribution of partnership asset all these topics and ownership changes in a partnership all these topics used to be covered under the core 
they're now they're moved to the TCP. Old E used to be a partnership. Again, now the new E is limited liability companies. Uh, limited liabilities companies used to be the old F. No change here. You need to know a few things about limited liabilities, limited liabilities companies. New F is the basics of tax-exempt organization. Also, tax-exempt organization is covered in TCP a little bit more in detail. So you need to know a little bit more about tax-exempt organization. Old D used to be trust. Trust is moved to the TCP. In the old H, tax-exempt organization becomes the new F, the new F, and a lot of these topics also new topics will be about tax exempt organization will also be in tcp so again tax exempt organization you know to, you need to know a little bit for the core reg and it's covered into tcp much much more in details so here's what we did uh, this is basically those two are this th those two are the same the federal taxation federal taxation of properties were taken some stuff out of it not some a lot out of it i would have to say federal taxation of property a federal a taxation of individual we're adding more to it we're adding more to it and we're subtracting some of from the federal we subtracted some from the federal taxation of entities now let's talk about the core not the core sorry we're done with the core let's talk about the specialization the specialization the tcp and those are the four topics of tcp tax compliance and planning for individual and let's start with that that which is area one tax compliance for individual and personal financial planning now i'm going to show you the topics some of the topics you might be familiar with them familiar means you already saw them in the core but at this level they want you to kind of look at them from a planning or a compliance perspective so the nature of the question will be little would require more of a judgment that's the difference for example equity compensation award on taxable income item effect in amt so they're going to put back amt just the items affecting you know the items affecting amt and how imputed interest below market rate compensation earned outside the u.s i would say those topics used to be covered under the old drag child investment and unearned income well it's just the, the kitty the kitty tax it's it's basically the same Ch changing of tax rate on the timing of income and expense given a scenario i would say this is a new topic this will be a new topic in other words about income and expense shifting planning tax savings well again hsa and fsa you should know the basics of them here you're going to know how they save you taxes and the question is how do they save you taxes how to use itemized deductions remember we're going to learn about itemized deduction in the core but now how to use them such as charitable contribution or other itemized deduction in for planning purposes so notice you're going to need to know them on a basic level in the core then how they're being used for planning purposes to reduce your taxes estimated tax payment to avoid a penalty i don't believe this is a new i don't believe this is a new topic um we we are, we are already learning about this in the core and here review on individual projected income and expenses prior to year end to determine the tax implication in other words there could be a simulation about this topic let's talk about tax planning uh compliance for passive activity and at risk limitation okay is this a new topic that could be a new topic why not um, at risk loss limitation a material versus passive participation real estate rental activities all these topics you kind of touch upon them in the core and here you're going to look at them at a, at a higher level netting of passive losses and gain but the higher level it's going to be much more complex much more advanced than the current reg i'm not sure that's the question suspended losses and disposition of passive activities it's covered in the current reg now but it's going to be under the T tcp now again you could have a cpa simulation about this um tax compliance and planning for individual you could have also area c gift taxation and compliance planning i told you most of the gift taxation will be moved to this section explain the unified transfer tax system this used to be on the cpa exam it was taken out now it's going to be back so you need to know what's the unified transfer tax system this is will be considered new calculate the amount of taxable gift for federal gift tax purposes again this used to be prior to this blueprint now they're they're, they're bringing it back identify the potential tax saving for gifting ownership again um used to be but it's it's new it's it's new compared to the current reg exam but it used to be in the past area that's totally should be new is personal financial planning for individual this is new this is new 
For example, you need to know advantages and the dis disadvantages of different qualified retirement plans, like I, the, the IRAs, Roth IRA versus traditional IRA, 401k, annuities, SEP plans, so on and so forth. The risk associated with different investments options, that such as equity, mini bond, corporate bond. Now we're talking a little bit more about investments. So this is basically new. I mean, those topics, the risks of equity, mini bonds, and corporate bonds, kind of do, do are covered in BEC, but I believe they're, they're going to be covered from a personal investment perspective. Understanding the planning of funding post education post-secondary education, including the qualified tuition program, student loan grants, and scholarship. It's a quasi-new because those topics you would learn about them under the adjustments, uh, under the core, but here you are looking at them from a planning perspective. How do they help you save taxes? Insurance is used in planning to mitigate risk. This is new, including life insurance, long-term care insurance, and umbrella policies. This, I would say this is a new, new topic. Demonstrate an understanding of the implication of legal ownership of an asset, beneficiary designation on an on an estate and its beneficiaries. New topic, and also you will expect you'll be expected to prepare a schedule to be used in the net tax impact. So basically, what's the savings net of tax? Giving a scenario again, those will be maybe a potential simulations. Corporations area two entity tax compliance. Well, they call it entity tax compliance. It's really the old reg. The old REC topic, you remember we moved some of the C corporation, they are right here. Net operating loss, transaction between shareholder and C corporation, consolidated tax return, international tax issues. Nothing new, just moved from old drag to the TCP. Same thing with S corporation. Basis of shareholder interest, remember that's also covered in the core. And I hate this because how much coverage we should give in the core versus the tax compliance, tax comp tax uh, planning and compliance. I don't know. Uh, it's tax compliance and planning. Transaction between shareholder and an S corporation. This this is again moved from the old reg to the TCP section. Again, when it comes to the entity tax compliance, there's a section for partnership. Again, whatever we remove from the partnership, from the core, it's moved to TCP. Um, area two entity tax compliance trust again this is moved from the old drag and we have more coverage about the trust uh, we have we need to know the different types of trust and income and deductions before it was just kind of knowing basics you know simple versus complex now we need to know a little bit more section e tax exempt organization basically the same as direct coverage the current track coverage because in the current track coverage you will need to understand a little bit about how to get how to be a tax exempt status and the unrelated business income those topics will be covered in tcp now talking about entity tax planning this is i would say it's not really new the topics are not new but the way it's going to be tested it's going to be new because the planning aspect of it starting with section a formation and liquidation of business entities this used to be part of the you remember that topic said we removed it from formation and liquidation part a of the core now it's here it's a bit more advanced than the old drag, a little bit more advanced. It could be just the language. Uh, again, how it's going to be tested, we don't know yet, but it's going to be from a planning perspective. But the topics, we should be familiar with them. Prepare a schedule that's used as an input of the, to an entity selection decision that calculate the tax implication of a non-cash transaction for multiple entity types. Again, I'm not going to read them, but the, the point is they are quasi new we should be familiar with them but the way they're going to be tested they're going to be tested on a different on a different level so we're going to have one about formation and liquidation of business entities in general business entities in general then we're going to have planning for specifically c corporation here you're a little bit more specific we're talking about c corporation compute the potential tax savings from the utilization of not operating capital losses and carry forward. We should be familiar with the topics, but how much they're gonna be tested, we'll find out. Identify opportunities to optimize state and local taxes. Again, we this is new, I would say, because we never had to kind of look at different scenarios, how to optimize tax savings. Calculate the effect of changing tax rate and legislation on the timing of income and expenses. This is tax planning, indeed, shifting of income expense income and expenses to save taxes and calculate estimated tax payment for C corporation in order to avoid underpayment. Um, again, uh, this topic is covered and we're going to see it again. And one more topic, derive the tax implication to a shareholder for the proposed transaction after formation of the corporation. I would say this is new, but this is also an extension of section 351.
We also have a tax planning for S corporation. S corporation. Let's take a look at those. Calculate the projected amount subject to built-in gains. Again, we used to cover built-in gains for a proposed disp disposition of an asset. Um, built-in gains were co are covered currently in reg. They are moved from the core. They're going to be here, but they're going to be tested from a planning perspective. Again, identify the implication of terminating an S corporation, which we already we learn about how to terminate again from a planning scenario, from a tax saving scenario. Derive the tax implication to a shareholder and S corporation for a proposed transaction after formation of the corporation. Here we're talking about quasi section 351. Also, we're going to be going back and discussing the AAA account, the AEP account when it comes to distribution, a topic that we are familiar with, nothing really new to us. Tax planning for partnership, uh, tax implication for the contribution, again, quasi section 351, tax implication of the various type of uh, various various types of payment to a partner, including guarantee payment, non-liquidating distribution, topics that, again, it's, they're covered right now, but not from a planning perspective. So that's 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 the difference. Now, area four. Remember area four, we removed the disposition of asset and the property transaction. They're going to have their own section here, which is fancy word for section 1031. So basically, 10, section 1031 will be covered here. Section 1231, 1245, 1250, 1244. All of those topics are covered now in reg. They're going to be moved to this area here. So 10 to 20 percent of the current reg will be moved here, including the potential of a simulation. Also under area four, under TCP, we're going to have related party transaction, including imputed interest. We already covered this in current reg right now. So this is not new topic. What is my summary about about uh, the new reg and the new TCP? Well, for one thing, if you don't like taxation, avoid TCP. So don't take the specialization. The only people I think they should take TCP is people who are working in tax. They have interest in tax. Otherwise, avoid it. Okay. So here's what's happening. In the core, they're trimming down on property transaction, which is good. They're making it relatively easier, relatively less easier. They're expanding on the individual. And individual relatively is easy. Although they're doing more expansion, it's easier than property transaction. It's easier than business entities such as C, S, and partnership, and they're trimming down on the business entities. So it's good news. If you're taking the core, it's good news. If you avoid the TCP, unless it's your specialty, that's what you are. You are currently working in tax, or you want to work in tax, or you took tax one, tax two, business law in college, you did very well, you like the topics, otherwise avoid it. Again, uh, what I try to do is just give you a summary of the changes, make your own decision, uh, don't forget, if you want additional resources, go to farhatlectures.com if you are studying for the CPA exam. Good luck, everyone, and stay safe.